Well, dear friends, dear colleagues, hello everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Welcome to our seminar. Today, we have a pleasure to have as our guest uh, Professor Eli Al Jadev from Technion University, Technion, Israel. And he will speak on uh, generic Azumaya graded generic Azumaya graded algebras. Synomy, I think. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So only uh, well, you you can start, please. Okay. Uh, thank you very very much. Uh, it is a real pleasure uh, to speak in this uh, seminar. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you for the organization. And thank you all for attending uh, this seminar. Um, as Ivan said, I will speak on generic Azumaya G graded uh, algebras, and I will explain uh, what do I mean by that. Uh, so the, the, the plan is to talk about some preliminaries, main problems, and examples, then I will say a few things about the construction of a G-graded Azumaya algebra, and then some applications to verbally prime uh, G-graded uh, T ideas. So this is a joint work with uh, Yaakov Karasik, um, and I will speak, I will talk about uh, this construction in characteristic zero. Okay, uh, this is the characteristic where we know the PI theory, Kemmer theory, and extensions of Kemmer theory. Uh, so I will um, uh, restrict myself to characteristic zero. Uh, let me say a few words about generic objects. Um, I will give two very well known. Uh, examples. Uh, the first one uh, is a proof of a Kelly Hamilton theorem, uh, which is, as far as I know, and I uh, ask many, many senior people, maybe you can correct me, this is attributed to Andre Vey. Uh, so you have a matrix, uh, let's say, with complex. Uh, coefficients, and P is the characteristic polynomial, and uh, Pn is equal to zero. So here is a proof, and I'm sure that most of you know this proof, but this is important to understand the, 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 the idea behind the, uh, the, the constructions. Okay, so the theorem is clear for n by n diagonalized and then matrices. Um, then it is true for matrices with characteristic values that are with different characteristic values. Okay, then it is true for matrices where the characteristic polynomial is irreducible. And now we take the generic matrix, okay, xij, uh, n by n matrix where the coefficients are just variables, commuting variables. Um, the characteristic polynomial of this matrix must be irreducible, because if it is not irreducible, then every characteristic, every matrix would have a reducible characteristic polynomial, which we know that it is false. So the generic matrix satisfy Kelly Hamilton, and so every specialization must satisfy the Kelly Hamilton. So that's the proof. So there is an interplay here between all matrices that go back to the generic, and then the generic specializes to all uh, objects. Okay, let me give you another example. And I apologize for mentioning here polynomial identities in this seminar, uh, but, but uh, just for a few words. Um, so polynomial identity, we have a, a free algebra 
and we take a polynomial and we say, I'm talking only about associative algebras. Uh, so this is the free associative algebra and it is an identity if it vanishes on every uh, evaluation. So the commutator is an identity of any commutative algebra. This is the Wagner or the whole identity of two by two matrices. The famous Amitsur Levitsky on two n variables, the standard polynomial on two n variables is a, a, an identity of n by n matrices, and this is of minimal degree. Uh, the set of identities is an ideal in the free algebra, and this is a T ideal. T ideal means that is transform, trans, transformation invariant. Okay, and it is closed under uh, substitutions. So here is the second example that I'm sure that you know very well. And everything that I will say here in this example, I, you know really well. But I'm mentioning that because part of the things that I will say here will not be true in the G graded case. Okay, so that's the reason that I'm mentioning here. So I have A, the n by n matrices over an algebraic and closed field. Now, the matrices are defined over Q, or even defined over the integers, okay, but are defined over Q. This means that there is an object over Q such that extending scalars give me back my algebra. And obviously, Q is the unique minimal field of definition of n by n matrices. So now I'm constructing the algebra of generic matrices, n by n matrices over Q. Okay, so I take even an infinite number, a countable number of, uh, uh, of generic matrices. Um, so this is an algebra. Equivalently, I can talk about the free algebra over Q and divide by the identities. Okay, the identities viewed as an ideal of the free algebra over Q. Okay, this also will be important later. So we get the domain and we localize the center and by taking the, uh, the localization, we get the so-called the generic division algebra of degree n over the rationals. I'm not saying that the rationals, of course, the rationals is not the center, okay? I'm constructing this algebra via the generic matrices over Q, okay? Uh, the center of this algebra is a very important object uh, that it was, and it is studied in many, many, different areas in Broward theory, in algebraic geometry. Um, okay, now instead of localizing the entire center, let me take a central polynomial of n by n matrices, okay? Um, and I can take a central polynomial um, whose coefficients are rationals, for example, the Regev polynomial, okay? Uh, this is a polynomial that gets only scalar values and not all of them are zero. Now, such a polynomial must vanish on n minus one and on matrices n minus one and minus one. And the reason is that if you evaluate this polynomial on this corner of n by n matrices, on one hand, you will get a scalar matrix. On the other hand, you get here a zero. So the only way that this can live together is if you get zero. So any central polynomial will vanish on n minus one uh, matrices. And now we invert this polynomial. And if we invert this polynomial, we get an algebra, okay? And Let's take this algebra and look at homomorphic images that are non-zero, okay, homomorphic. Of course, zero is an homomorphic image. I want homomorphic images that are non-zero. So every homomorphic image will definitely satisfy the identities of n by n, 
okay? But because F will vanish on N minus one matrices, okay? The identities of B cannot contain the identities of N minus one, N minus one matrices, okay? Because otherwise the value of F will be zero in the image. And this is impossible since F is invertible. This is exactly the situation of Artin Procesi theorem, okay? An important theorem in PI theory. Um, such an A must be an Azumaya algebra of degree N over its center. And its center here will be, uh, in this case, will be a domain. Okay, let me, I, I will not define Azumaya algebra by taking, uh, uh, you know, finitely generated projective. I, I just did two, two conditions, so two, two, two properties. One that are important uh, for us, and in fact, these are the properties that I will know later how to extend in the G graded setting. Uh, so the first one that uh, you know very well is a one-to-one -one correspondence between ideals of this Azumaya algebra, okay, and ideals of the center. Okay, all ideals come from the um, from the center. And this algebra specializes to forms, forms in the sense of, of descent, okay? Uh, algebras that restrict after extension of scalars to n by n matrices. And it specializes to all forms, to all forms. And in order to specialize to all forms, that's the reason that we need to construct our algebra over Q. Because if you construct the algebra over a bigger field, you will not be able to detect as a spe with specializations forms that are um, uh, uh, below that minimal, below, below the field of definition. So for the matrices, Q is the minimal field of definition, and that's why I construct the algebra over the rationals. Okay, um, so some property, remember we are talking about the second example. The first one was, I mean, the, the KD Hamilton, now we are in the second. Um, now the fact that we have the division algebra um, as the localization of the Azumaya algebra, of the, of the algebra that we constructed uh, above, then properties, not every property, but certain properties of the division algebra, they can be lifted to the Azumaya algebra, and then they will, they will uh, uh, specialize to all forms. And one of these uh, properties is being a G cross product. Okay, so if the division algebra, if the generic division algebra is a G cross product, then the Azumaya algebra will be also a G cross product. Okay, and this is a G cross product. You take a, a, a Galois extension, G the Galois group, and alpha is an element of the second cohomology group, okay, with the Galois action. And using this, uh, this, this setup, this construction, Amitsur proved the remarkable, a remarkable result that there are division algebras, there exist division algebras that are non-cross product. Okay, and in fact, the generic division algebra of degree eight or P square, where P is odd, is not a cross product. So what is the idea? If P is odd and G is of order P square, there are two groups. One is cyclic of order uh, P square, and the other one is CPCP. So he found division algebras that maybe they are cross products, okay? I mean, his, his construction, they, they are cross product, let's say with CP square, but they are not cross product with CPCP. And he found other algebras that are cross product with CPCP, but are not cross product with CP square. Okay, and this shows that the division algebra, the generic cannot be a cross product 
okay? Because if it was a cross product, let's say with CP squared, then all algebras have to be cross product with the same group, okay? So this is the application of the generic uh, construction. There are many, many other applications of generic uh, construction. So what do we want? We want to construct a generic object for any finite dimensional G-graded simple algebra. Okay, this is what we want. And after the localization, we asked, is it a graded division algebra, like in the ungraded case? The answer will be no very very strongly no okay and then there is a question for what kind of g simple algebras uh, the the generic object will be a graded uh, division algebra okay so let me give you a short uh, a, a, a short mini or nano course on finite dimensional g simple algebras Okay, uh, many of you are real, real experts on that. Um, so first of all, two examples. Uh, the first one is a group algebra or more generally a twisted group algebra. A twisted group algebra is, let's say H a subgroup of G, a twisted group algebra with uh, H, this is a, 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 a G simple algebra, it's even a, a G graded division algebra, okay? Because all non zero homogeneous elements are invertible. Another example is R by R matrices with an elementary grading, okay? Where the element EIJ is a homogeneous of degree GI inverse GJ, okay? This is the J column, this is the I flow, okay? And you give the EIJ element a homogeneous degree GI inverse uh, GJ. This is a, a grading. This is a very nice uh, grading. It's called elementary. And of course, the algebra is even simple. It is just matrices. Okay, so of course it is G simple. Uh, but during Segal and Zaitsev theorem, which is extremely important for this lecture and extremely important in general um, and it has been extended but i'm talking about algebraically closed fields uh, of characteristic zero so if f is an algebraically closed field characteristic zero okay and you take a finite dimensional g simple algebra then every such algebra the graded structure is a combination of the other two um, gradings that i just described the fine grading and the elementary grading okay so let me uh, spend a few uh, minutes on that the grading is given by a certain data okay i, I let's try to because this will come uh, very heavily later in the in the lecture uh, the grading is given by certain data which i'm calling p sub a okay and you need to fix a subgroup h of g okay all this lecture g is finite so i don't have to say that h is this finite subgroup of g but you can do it also for G infinite. And if you do it for G infinite, H has to be finite. Okay? So, okay, so we have H a subgroup of uh, G. And alpha is a two cycle uh, of H with coefficients in the units of the field. And this is the grading vector, the grading vector that gives the elementary grading. Okay, and now we take the twisted group algebra, F alpha H that we had above, and we take the R by R matrices that also we had above, and we take the tensor product of them. Okay, a basis of this algebra is the U sub H, okay, the elements from the twisted group algebra and the EIJ, and I take the tensor product. Okay, this is a basis of the algebra, and the homogeneous degree 
of UH EIJ is GI inverse HGJ in this way, okay? Because the main of the most important part of this lecture is to deal with non abelian groups, okay? So this is important, the ordering here. Uh, I will also use what is called the E center of U. Okay, U is our algebra, the U center of U. This is the intersection of the center of U with the E homogeneous elements, with the trivial homogeneous uh, elements. This will play the role of the center in the, in the, in the ungraded uh, setting. Okay, so here it is not the center. Okay, we don't take the center because it's even not graded in general. Okay, but we take the E elements of the center. Okay, why do we care about grading? Okay, there are again many reasons to care about grading. So let me give you just two examples. One is the cross product algebra that I just mentioned uh, above. Okay, extending scalars, we get a G simple algebra. And what is this G simple algebra? It's the n by n matrices where the data is take the group H to be the trivial group. And the tuple that gives the elementary grading is just all elements of the group. Okay, the cross products are really important. Uh, for example, they give the isomorphism between the Brown group of a field and the second cohomology group. Okay, GK is the absolute Galois group, and KS star is the units of this of the closure with characteristic zero in general separable closure. Another example is symbol algebra. So suppose you take uh, your field contains an nth root of unity and A and B are units, okay, non-zero elements, and you construct the symbol algebra that are, is generated by x and y, x to the n is equal to a, y to the n is equal to b, and x, y is zeta n by x. Extending scalars, we get the twisted group algebra that appear in Bacturin classification, okay, Bacturin, Sagan, and Zeitzer, where h is just the z mod n, z mod n. Okay, product of two cyclics. Okay, and this is again very important uh, construction. For example, if uh, uh, the roots of unity are contained in the base field, then the n torsion of the Brown group is generated by symbol algebra. This is the celebrated Mercuri and Suslian uh, theory. Okay. So we spoke about the, the, this presentation. Um, something that uh, it's, it's important to have in mind because it appears in the, in the proofs, uh, something about the uniqueness of the presentation. Of course, the presentation determines the uh, graded structure up to a graded isomorphism. Okay, but in the other way around, the graded uh, isomorphism type of the algebra does not determine the uh, presentation, but it determines the presentation up to some basic moves. So there are three basic moves, okay? I would say that you don't need to remember them, okay? One of them allows you to, to commute the elements of the elementary grading. The other one allows you to multiply on the left by elements of uh, H. And the third one is a little bit more complicated, not very complicated. Okay, so there are three moves that do not change the G graded uh, isomorphism type. And any two G graded isomorphic algebras, you can pass from the uh, uh, presentation data from one to the other by a sequence of these uh, moves, okay? This will be important because we will use the, the presentation and it is important to know that if we choose another the presentation, then this is uh, well-defined, 
Okay? So, so here are the main questions that we are uh, asking. A is a finite dimensional G graded simple algebra over uh, F with presentation PL. Okay? Twisted tensor matrices. And I want to construct a generic G graded Azumaya algebra which specializes precisely, not more and not less, to all G graded forms of A. And G graded forms means that if you extend scalars of the E center, then you get your original algebra A. Okay, exactly as in the graded case. Second, I want to determine the conditions on the presentation so that A admits a G-graded division algebra, G-graded form. Most of the algebras, G-graded simple, will not admit, okay? But some of them will admit, and I want to determine exactly the, the presentation that will tell me that there is a graded form that is a graded division algebra, okay? It will be evident that the conditions are satisfied by one graded presentation, then they are satisfied by every uh, presentation of A. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about the construction. So as I said, we want a generic algebra that specializes to all G-graded forms of A. And I think the main obstacle is to find a unique minimal field of definition for the algebra A, okay? We want a field, a minimal field, a unique minimal field, such that you can find the form of A over that field, and this is the, as I said, unique minimal, okay? If we cannot find such a minimal, then the generic algebra that we can construct, maybe, it will not specialize to all graded forms, okay? And after that, after we find such a K, we want the identities to be defined over uh, that field, okay? And therefore, we will be able to write the relatively free over that field modulo the identities that are also defined over that field. Okay, to say that the identities are defined over that field is what you know, just linear algebra, that all identities are obtained by extension of uh, scalars. So we want to talk about the graded identities. Okay, we want to imitate exactly the construction that we have in the ungraded case. Okay, so just one line. Graded identities is exactly what you expect. Okay, is uh, polynomials, homogeneous polynomials with variables decorated with uh, elements of the group. Okay, and you uh, say that this is an identity if homogeneous evaluations are uh, zero. Okay, so X sub G I1 can be evaluated only in a component that is homogeneous of degree GI1, okay, and so on. Okay, and the entire theory, or, or um, I, I wouldn't say entire theory, but a lot, a lot of the theory, camera theory, uh, co-dimension growth, uh, was extended to the G-graded uh, setting. Okay, now, if the algebra is defined over Q, let's suppose that you find a, a field of definition, even if it is not minimal, okay? Then immediately the identities are defined over that field, okay? This is easy to prove, okay? And therefore we can write identities over uh, as, a, as an ideal in that algebra. But note that in general, the converse is not true. The identities can be defined over a smaller field, over a lower field than the algebra. You can construct an algebra, Okay, not the algebras that we are considering here. Okay, but you can construct an algebra that is defined over a certain field and the identities over a certain field and this field is a minimal field of definition 
and the identities are defined over a smaller field. The main theorem, which is not very difficult for G abelian, and it is the more, I would say, most involved theorem for G non abelian, is to prove and construct that for every G graded simple algebra, finite dimensional, okay, there exists a field of definition K, which is unique minimal for A and also for the identities. In general, I wouldn't care much about finding that this is the minimal field of definition also for the identities, okay? All, all I need is to construct the relatively free algebra. But the reason that it is important is that the only way that I can prove that a certain field is unique minimal for the algebra A is first of all showing that this is a field of definition and then showing that any smaller field, any, any lower field is not the field of definition for an identity. So if I take a, a smaller field, I can find polynomial identities that when you decompose them into the a, a smaller field, the components are non-identities. And therefore, the identities are not defined over a smaller field, and therefore the algebra is not defined over a smaller field. Okay, this is a, a, an important point. So what is K? And this K will be defined over, uh, will be determined by the presentation. Okay, I will not give the entire uh, construction. It's, uh, it will take me a little bit more time that work that um, I have. Okay, but let me say a few words about that. Um, of course, the field of definition can be not smaller than Q. And I claim that the minimal field of definition is contained in a certain cyclotomic extension. So what is this cyclotomic extension? And moreover, this cyclotomic extension will be the field of definition exactly in the case, or not exactly, it will be a field of definition in case G is abelian. But in case G is not abelian, this may not be minimal. Okay, so what is this uh, cyclotomic uh, extension? So we have the, the second cohomology group, right, that appear in the presentation. Here is the, present uh, 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 the presentation, there is a second cohomology group. F is algebraically closed, so it is isomorphic to home MH with coefficients in F star. MH is the sure multiplier of H. Okay, and alpha goes to a homomorphism, and this homomorphism is an homomorphism from the sure multiplier to F star. H is a finite group, so the Schur multiplier is a finite group, so the image are roots of unity. So this map factor through mu of n. The mu of n is exactly the image of this uh, uh, homomorphism. Okay? So this field, Q mu n, will be a field of definition for the twisted part. This is the twisted part. And the n by n matrices, Q is a field of definition. So the tensor product is definitely a field of definition for the algebra, for the entire algebra, okay? But it is not minimal in general, okay? And that's where the complications uh, start. There is a certain subgroup that contains uh, H and is contained in the normalizer of H, okay? And this group depends on the presentation, on the elementary part and on the cocycle, depends on everything, okay? And the fixed field of this, this subgroup will act on 
the uh, decyclotomic extension, and the fixed field will be the minimal field of definition. Okay, now we take the free algebra, the free graded algebra, okay, over that minimal field of definition, and we have that the identities are defined there, okay? Okay, and we consider the relatively free algebra. We consider the relatively free algebra uh, as we, we should do, and we know that the identities are equal to the identities of A. Okay, and now we take the homomorphic image of the relatively free algebra. Let's suppose that this is a non-zero homomorphic image. Then, of course, the identities of W will contain the identities of A. Every homomorphic image will contain the identities of A, but it may contain more identities, okay? Uh, so the algebra, if it contains more identities, cannot be a form of A. And now the task is to find a suitable E central polynomial F such that if we localize the algebra exactly as in the ungraded setup, then every homomorphic image, of course, will satisfy the identities of uh, A, but it will not satisfy more identities. In other words, it will satisfy exactly the identities of A. Okay? I will say that this is Azumaya in the sense of Artim and Procesi. Now, how to construct such a, a polynomial, such a central, E central polynomial? And for this, we will need Kemmer theory. Kemmer theory for G graded algebras that was um, developed by uh, Belov and myself. Uh, there are many ways to, to, to present the Kemmer theory or the G graded Kemmer theory. All I need, which is the heart of Kemmer theory, is the following. If you have a, an ideal of identities of a certain algebra that contains the ideal of graded identities of a certain finite dimensional algebra, G graded, everything is G graded. Okay? So, Identities of W contains the identities of a finite dimensional algebra. Then the G graded Kemmer theory will say that there exists a B finite dimensional where the identities are equal. Okay? If it is, you have a containment, then there is another algebra where the identities are equal. This is what I need. So now let me comment on the construction of F an E central polynomial. First of all, there are E central polynomials. This was constructed by uh, Karasi. E central polynomials uh, exist. And you can show that also exist defined over this unique minimal field of definition. Okay, so you can localize the algebra. You localize the algebra and you want you want homomorphic images. Of course, they will satisfy the identities of the algebra A, but you want that the, the homomorphic image will satisfy precisely the identities of A. So let's suppose for the moment that a certain homomorphic image uh, satisfies more identities than A. Okay, so identities of W, contains, strictly contains, the identities of A. Then by graded Kemmer theory, there is a finite dimensional algebra, U1, UQ are the simple components, okay? J, the, the Jacobson radical, such that the identities of W are equal to the identities of P, and of course, they contain strictly the identities of A. Now, U1 you you to UQ are subalgebras of B, and of course they will also contain, the identities of UI will contain the identities of A. Okay? So let's consider now 
all G simple algebras, finite dimensional E over an algebraically closed field, such that the identities of E contain strictly the identities of A, exactly like the UI above. Claim there are only a finite number of them. Okay? Now, for each one of those, we construct a polynomial, an E central polynomial that is an E central polynomial of A and it vanishes on E for each one of those. And then we take the product and you have to show that this is a non identity. This will be the polynomial that I want to localize. Okay? This polynomial will vanish on ui, u1 to uq by construction. Therefore, the uh, values on the algebra B will contain, will be contained in the Jacobson radical. So for some power, there will be identities of B, therefore will be identities of W. Okay, so if you invert, W cannot contain more identities than A, okay? This is the artin Procesi uh, condition. So what do we get? We get a, a, an algebra, we get an algebra uh, whose E center is commutative, is a commutative domain. All non-zero homomorphic images satisfy the identities of A and not more. The G graded ideas of U are in one to one correspondence with the ideas of the E center. Okay? And all K forms of A are obtained as homomorphic images, and only forms are obtained. Okay, now let me go to verbally prime uh, T ideas. I have another 15 minutes. Um, so you know, there are two, this is in a part of Kemmer theory, uh, two equivalent uh, definitions. One is via T ideals, and the other one is via polynomials. So via T ideals is that if you have a product containing gamma, then at least one of them must be in gamma. Take two polynomials with uh, disjoint uh, variables, okay? If the product is in gamma, then at least one of them must be in gamma. Another way to see it, that if gamma is the identities of A, then P times Q vanishes on A, then one of them must vanish on A. Okay, this is the same. Now, what is, let me recall one line or four lines. <laughs> what is the camera representability uh, theorem? Any T ideal of gamma is of the form uh, uh, ideal of identities of a finite dimensional algebra or the Grassmann envelope uh, of a super, finite dimensional super uh, algebra. This is the Grassmann envelope. Okay, and how the uh, verbally prime T ideas look like? Uh, uh, they are T ideal of identities of n by n matrices or the uh, ideal of identities of the Grassmann envelope of a Z2 simple algebra. Finite dimensional Z2 simple algebra. Okay? These are the verbally prime either in the ideal definition or in the polynomial definition. Now, let me give you a wrong proof, okay? And this will be important uh, later. A wrong proof or almost, <laughs> or, or at least not very precise proof that the ideal of identities of n by n matrices is verbally prime. n by n matrices have a form which is a division algebra, okay? A, a T ideal, we are in characteristic zero, T ideal is generated by multilinear identities. So the T ideal of n by n matrices is the same as the T ideal of the division algebra. 
P and Q with these joint variables, let's suppose that they are non-identities of uh, matrices, okay? And we need to show that the product is a non-identity. But P, P and Q are non-identities of D, and hence admit a non-zero value, which is invertible, each one of them. The variables are different, therefore the product has a non-zero value, and that's it. Okay, so why this is unprecise? This is unprecise because P and Q have coefficients in F and in general, not necessarily in the center of K, in the center of D. So the evaluation does not take values in D, the evaluation will take values in the extension. And therefore, there we do have zero devices. Okay, so how can we fix? There are many, many ways, of course, you, the, how to prove uh, that, but the way that I want to say is that you can find the form, which is a division algebra, that the center contains the algebraically closed field. Okay, this will not be true in the graded case. Okay, so do you have a form that contains as many roots of unity that you want. That is a division algebra. And there you are fine because your polynomials have coefficients in F and everything is fine. Okay, what about the G graded uh, case? The definitions of verbally prime uh, T ideas via T ideas or via polynomials are not equivalent. Via polynomials is much, much stronger. Okay, now what is the classification? Via T ideals, this is already by Berele and Bergen from 99. Okay, so this is the G graded verbally prime in terms of ideals. Okay, and the, the, the result is what you expect. Okay, is that every such verbally prime T ideal must be the uh, T ideal of G graded identities where A is finite dimensional G graded simple. Okay, or the uh, Grassmann envelope of an algebra that is Z2 cross G graded simple. Okay, and so that's it. Now, via polynomials, uh, means P times Q is in gamma if P or Q, uh, P or Q are in gamma. This is the strongly verbally prime. And this is a, a result of uh, Karasik uh, and myself. And we can give an answer only in the affine case. Okay, we don't have an answer in the non-affine case. So since it is stronger, Okay, since it is stronger than uh, uh, verbally prime via ideals, the gamma has to be the T ideal of a G graded simple algebra. But now we need more conditions on the presentation. Okay, so this is what the theorem says. Gamma is the T ideal of a, a identity of finite dimensional algebra, then it is strongly verbally prime if and only if it is the T ideal of a G-graded simple uh, algebra with presentation, okay, this is the presentation, and this is the condition on the presentation. H has to be normal in G. H cosets must be represented equally in G. Okay, here there is a, a, a very small condition that of course, we want the homogeneous components to generate, the non-zero homogeneous component to generate the algebra. Okay, we, we can take, uh, uh, we could take element G1 to GR that do not generate the entire group. Okay, so then you will get a smaller group. So if uh, uh, you want a, a genuine grading by the group G, then you need all cosets to be represented the same number of times uh, in G. And finally, alpha 
has to be G invariant, right? G, H is normal in G, so G acts on H. G will act trivially on F, okay? And alpha has to be G invariant. This is the condition for strongly verbally crime. Okay, and using the generic construction that I mentioned uh, above, suppose that gamma contains a Capelli polynomial, this is the affine situation, then it is strongly verbally prime if and only if um, is the T ideal of identities of A, where A is the G graded simple and admits a G graded division algebra form, okay, over its E center, but the center contains an algebraically closed field. Okay, so again, a, a T ideal is strongly verbally prime if it is the T ideal of a G simple algebra. Okay, and this G simple algebra admits a G graded division algebra, but not arbitrary. The center will contain or can contain. A, a, an algebraically closed field. Okay, so what I mean by that is that there exist G simple algebras that may admit a G graded division algebra form over some field K, but if I require this field K to contain an algebraically closed field, then there is no a graded division algebra form. Okay? This is the condition of strongly verbally prime. We are almost done. So what is the next question to ask? What is the verbally primeness condition on T ideals that correspond to finite dimensional G graded simple algebra that admit an arbitrary graded division algebra form? So with no condition on the E center. Okay, and this is what we call we can answer this in 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 in, in the um, uh, case of a fine algebra, in the case where the T idea contains a Capelli polynomial. These are what we call essentially verbally prime T ideas. These are T ideas gamma, which are defined over a field K, and this K is unique minimal for these T ideas. And if I look at the polynomials with coefficients in this field K, then there are no non-trivial zero divisors. Non-trivial zero divisors mean that if the product with different, with the joint variables, then if the product is in gamma, then at least one of them must be in gamma. Okay? So one direction is easy, and for the other direction, we need the generic construction, and this is more important. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. Okay, next thing. Now, uh, questions? Any questions, comments, please? Do really. Normally questions appear a little later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have an immediate question, maybe an E1. So okay, let's, okay. Forget, yeah, let's forget for a moment uh, the identities. Let's focus on grading. And uh, let's uh, ask ourselves about G-graded forms of a given algebra. So usual forms without any uh, consideration of grading are classified by the first Galois cohomology. And uh, my question is, is there any hope to use some version of Galois cohomology to yeah. classify also graded forms? I think so, yes. I think, uh, uh, I mean, this is something that we are talking about uh, for many, many, many years. Uh, uh, in some very special cases, we saw that this is true, uh, this can be done. Uh, 
I think that it has not been done in general. Okay, thank, thank you, Elena. Okay. Any other questions? Please, uh, Claudio, we want to ask. Uh, sorry. Any more questions? Well, I have a question, maybe not a little, a little far from your mainstream of your talk. It's if you consider what what say a general generic object for for super variety generated by a super algebra, not just G grade, wow. this up to graded by. <laughs> That means the, if you have a super algebra, I mean, I would say super identities, they one, have one and one correspondence, at least in characteristic zero, which yes. the identities of a Grassmann envelope. Yes, you, 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 are, you are touching the, 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 the problematic, uh, I mean, as the, all the time I say that everything was done in the affine case. Of course, using what you said, we should be able to do it in the non-affine uh, case. Uh, we still don't know. Okay. Uh, uh, so for example, what are can we construct a generic object for the Grassmann envelope of a super algebra? Well, well, I mean, this generic object we can can try to consider to construct in two ways, or as an algebra, or as a super algebra. As yes. an algebra, I believe it's I understand it's difficult to just yes the identity of Grassmann envelope it's a huge object but yes maybe yeah. in some somehow in in terms of as a super algebra yes yes and then there is the correspondence yes uh, yes yes i i, I think uh, i it, it will not solve this problem right it will not solve the uh, but i i think uh, yes Mm -hmm. Okay, more questions and comments, please. This very interesting object, this uh, generic Azumaya graded algebra, it's and you gave very good constructions. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm looking at you, I have here five cameras, so I'm looking at you. <laughs> More questions, comments? Well, <laughs> Maybe questions will appear in an uh, informally discussion <laughs> later. Well, anyhow, let's thanks. Thanks again, Eli, for a very, very interesting talk. Thank you very much, Eli. <laughs> and I just want to make an announce for the next for the next week for the next week we will have let me see for the next we will he, week uh, we will have a talk by uh, the speaker professor daniel nakano from the university of georgia and he will speak on a new Lee theory for classical Lee super algebra so see you the next thursday Thank you very much, everybody, for participation.
So till the next Thursday. To listen Thank to you. Thank you. Thank you again, Eli. Thank you. Mm -hmm.